the Immortals mid laner. That's right, guys. We have the Immortal mid laner here, Poe Belter. Very good performance from you in this series. Congratulations on your victory. Now, last week was not the same story, though. Uh, you guys had a really rough week against some of the bottom teams. How did you rebound? You know, what's the you know camaraderie like with the team? Yeah, last week was really rough because, like you said, it was against the teams in the bottom half of the standing. So we were like, all right, we're gonna <laughs> we we got to two out these guys, and then we'll be looking really good, and we probably have a good spot set up for playoffs. But uh, didn't go as expected. We went 0-2, and yeah, it was, it was really depressing, kind of crushing to <laughs> lose that way, especially because both games we won the first game of the set, and then we lost, but we just tried our best to maintain our composure, you know, review what we did wrong, what we can do better, and just see what we can do for our upcoming weeks because all our matches from here on out are against, like, all the top teams. Yeah, and you guys are still in the running for a playoff spot. Um, I mean, talk about confidence. I mean, you came out with a lot of confidence in this series, picking Katarina. What is the mid lane meta right now like for you? Uh, and what did give you the confidence to go for uh, Katarina? I think mid lane, well, for this entire season, has had a lot of versatility so far. And for me, it's really nice because I've been playing the game for so long, I feel like I have a good champion pool. But what made me want to pick Katarina was because it's like a pretty good lane matchup against Victor if you can get past the early laning phase. And then also we had Shen, which pairs really well with Kat, so that's why I thought it would be good to pick it. Well, you have found success today. Tomorrow will be uh, a more difficult uh, opponent, maybe. TSM is going to be there. Bjergsen specifically for you. How do you feel about the matchup with Bjergsen, uh, you know, one of these Danish mid laners? Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun to play against Bjergsen because he's like one of the mid laners I've played against for the longest time. Ever since like season three, I think, you know, other people have come and gone, but <laughs> we've been fighting, we've been button heads ever since then. So it's always fun going against him because he's really good. All right. Well, good luck to you tomorrow. We are now going to send it over to the analyst desk for a few words. Huh. Hello. I we was told back. analysts. I was. Lying. I know. Uh, we were lied <laughs> about analysts. That's okay. We are back <laughs> here. Um, Got to give a shout out to Ole, of course, for getting player of the game. No surprise. We get to control this one. I didn't have to name drop Dash. We just got to dictate it ourselves. But I think everyone's kind of very obvious that he was the one who, who did a lot of the heavy lifting. Great play in the bottom lane overall. Got that two for zero at the beginning. Roaming to the mid lane. Got Polo through a kill. Just great stuff by him. Yeah, and then Ole, I mean, he was showing up and actually his R's and his Q's were really good. I like the way he was using the soul flare and how he actually hit priority targets, he hit the back line and made sure that it was a, a fight that was much slower and harder to get away from, which mm -hmm. then gives a composition that has something like a Jace on it. Time to regroup, yep. time to group back up, and then actually uh, throw in shock blasts and continue to get damage out. It's very hard to escape. Yeah, I mean, I agree. You've got a team that runs at you. You've got dashes and, and hastes and, and long range ulties kind of galore. You've, everyone's got some kind of incredibly long reach to, to make those fights happen. And so, yeah, the game was over from, from the goal lead at that point. And, and hey, props to Immortal. So, as you heard Paul Walter talk about, they're up against TSM tomorrow. That's still going to be very hard, uh, honestly. Like, and it's just right the strength of schedule versus the team playing better. And it feels like these teams keep just hopping up and down and how good they're playing, how bad they're playing. Like, it feels like so many of these squads are like wildly inconsistent. Yeah, and I, I will say for sure that these teams, uh, it's so hard to tell what day they're going to start popping off and what day is the day that they're yeah. going to fall back down. Last yeah. week for Immortals, it seemed like one of those fall down days. Today, mm -hmm. seems like one of those days that are doing really well. Same yeah. thing with CLG and Dignitas, which just happened in the battle theater ahead right. of time. It's like Dignitas coming back from an 0-2 week beats CLG 2-0. So yeah. it's just who was going to show up on that day and who had the, like even like scrim results aside, yeah. who had the appropriate week of practice coming in and is on point that day. Right, and, and you see like both mistakes and, and good plays that you don't expect from those players. Like all, I'm going to harken back to CLG versus... Um, Team Nigatas in game two where CLG's playing that split push composition, and they're like, ooh, okay, the Fiora's pushing the top lane, he's killed the inhibitor off, like, we gotta stop recall so we can win the game. And it's like, but Nautilus already empowered recalled, and now you're just diving into a three on four, just, just like, give the Jin team some kills so they can kill your base, right? Like, Aphromoo's better than that, right? He, he's better under, like, he's smarter, than, he's smarter enough to realize, like, you don't, you don't re-engage a fight where you're down 5,000 gold in the four on four, when they have engaged tools, you're just going to give the kills away. And lo and behold, they give the kills away and, and they lose it all. And it was just like, you know, really disheartening to see when the teams are hit and miss, like uh, players make mistakes that you know they're better than this. It's like, you know, you shouldn't be making this call or making this play. And that's just like really unfortunate to see. And as we're getting closer and closer to MSI, like you're hoping to see ooh, who's going to be the North American representative. And you hope that the team that goes is actually 
practiced and ready to go and not just stomping over inconsistent teams. Yeah, you you hope it's the best team, not the best team on that day yeah. that ended up winning. Right? right. You want to see consistency. And that's why it's always interesting as we approach these international tournaments. We want our representative to be the one that has shown the most consistency at yeah. a high level. Yep. As opposed to the one that you know maybe could get knocked out in group stages or something. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> right. And, and it still looks like it's going to be maybe C9 or TSM, but of course still more to go. We're going to pass to commercial. We'll be back uh, on the other stream, I assume, with the other matches, but we'll see you.